This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and Manscaped. 2020 has been the year of many things. Uh, the pandemic, Black Lives Matter protests, the presidential election, and the Democrats' inexplicable decision to rally behind Joe Biden, of all people, and also Karens. Karens, of course, aren't anything new. There's always been people, specifically white women, but definitely not limited to just them, who have an extreme sense of entitlement, a total lack of respect for service employees, and often a big dash of racism thrown into the mix. Mm -hmm. But this was uh, definitely the year when Karen, as a term for this kind of person, really entered the mainstream lexicon, largely thanks to the fact that uh, service employees who Karen hates were now demanding that Karen put on a mask. Yeah. I've never had to struggle in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And this is now an affront to anything I stand for. Mm -hmm. So it's no surprise that someone went ahead and developed a Karen video game. Karen, an outrage simulator that dropped on Steam a few days ago. And the description reads as follows. Become the ultimate Karen. Argue your way through six unique stages and unlock your true potential as you demand refunds, battle managers, and crush the underpaid souls of the customer service industry. Discover your origins. Learn why Karen is the way she is by uncovering her mysterious past, unraveling her harshest critics, finding what makes her happy, and exploring the fierce spirit that dwells within her. Argue to win. Become a master of manipulation and drive down any clerk's resolve by attacking their confidence, destroying their patience, or focusing their guilt to get your way. Witness insane freakouts. If you can't whittle down the cashier's resolve before your freakout meter reaches its limit, you'll lose your cool, go on a meme-worthy rampage, and become a laughingstock. Quick laughs. The game is brief and gets to the comedy right away. Expect a few good chuckles, a bit of a challenge, and some short, simple fun unlocking its 12 achievements over around 30 minutes of story. And uh, seeing how the game is currently priced at just $2.54, marked down from its full price of $2.99. Launch discount. <laughs> and uh, the fact that it only features around a half an hour of gameplay, I figured I would just go ahead and try it out for myself. Oh, cool. And you know what? It's actually not bad if you don't mind visual novel style games and art that looks like it's from like a WikiHow article. No. Uh, the game, it's basically just a series of customer service interactions at multiple locations around town, starting with a convenience store where you show up with an expired coupon for a free bag of chips. That's where the game explains to you that the cashier you're talking to has a finite amount of confidence, indifference, and patience, and you'll need to reduce one of those down to zero. Uh, strategies include intimidating them to wear down their confidence, guilting them to wear down their indifference, or annoying them to wear down their patience. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that uh, this game is going to have a lot of refunds just because it, it hits that window, and it is the ultimate Karen achievement mm. to play something in full and then return it. I considered it. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> they earned the $2. Yeah. yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm not going to be that petty about well, it. Hopefully there's a bunch of people like you, but I guarantee you the final nail in like the I have succeeded as Karen Coffin will be yeah. returning a game you've played in full. Yeah. No, I, I, it definitely occurred to me. I'm like, there's what, like a three-hour window where you can get a refund? I think it's like two hours, yeah. 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 Anyways, there's also a freak-out meter that you need to pay, uh, pay attention to in this game. Karen obviously is going to get madder and madder throughout an interaction. So if your freak-out meter fills up all the way before you're able to wear down the service employee that you're talking to, Karen has a freak-out that ends up posted online and you lose the game. Yep. Because you would probably get fired from your job down at Michael's Arts and Crafts. Yeah, and you don't get what you want. Yeah. Karen's all about getting what she wants. That's the thing about a lot of Karens, too. It's a, it's a very fine bag of uh, Karens who do nothing all day. There's also some that are they themselves, the service employees, and they take out their frustrations that they've dealt with on the others. Yeah. Anyways, uh, as you see here, Elliot first made the cashier double check the coupon, then insulted his customer service skills, then made him try scanning it anyway, which ended up wearing down his patience enough that he honored the coupon out of his own pocket. Yep. That's a Karen achievement right there. Yeah. Fine. I'll just, if my manager gives me shit for it, I'll just have him take it out of my pay. Yeah, exactly. Just so I don't have to deal with you anymore. It, I would be much happier to pay my own money than have you around any longer. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, success. Now, after getting my bag of chips, I next sent Karen over to Starbucks. Uh, she placed her order in the app ahead of time. That order being a grande mochaccino with almond milk, six pumps of syrup, <laughs> java chips, six pumps of espresso, fresh non-dairy whipped cream, and double vegan fair trade chocolate sauce mm -hmm. at exactly 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Uh, shockingly, the order ends up not being exactly what Karen was expecting. So the barista goes ahead and remakes the drink correctly. But that's not enough for Karen. Karen wants a refund. And so to get my refund, I uh, first yell at the barista about 
how I might have been allergic to the first drink, which, you know, that crushes some of his confidence. Well, he wouldn't want to kill anyone. But he tries to excuse his mistake by pointing out that the order was extremely complicated, but Karen flips it on by telling him that he has one job, and that's getting orders right. That crushes his confidence further. <laughs> and uh, next, the four dialogue options for Karen, they're all the same. I'd like to speak to the manager. Oh, fantastic. Mm-hmm. But uh-oh, twist here. Turns out the barista is the manager. Oh, my God. Well, what are you going to do now? Threaten to call up corporate, of course, which finally breaks the barista's confidence enough to just give Karen her drink for free, which at this point is no longer hot, uh, so she just throws it away. Next up, uh, Karen heads down to the supermarket, but uh uh-oh, they're requiring customers to wear face masks. Karen, of course, has no face mask and does not intend to wear one. Nope. Uh, Elliot decided to role play this one by choosing the dialogue option saying that uh, masks don't even work. And that employee then tells Karen that the mask rule is based on government health guidelines. So Karen calls the employee a bitch, which prompts the employee to ask Karen, who hurt you? So this then leads to a flashback in which we get to actually find out who hurt Karen. And in this case, uh, young Karen, she was working in an office and got repeatedly verbally abused by one of her superiors for being unable to satisfy his excessive demands. Uh, Following this, you know, very uh, traumatic interaction, she decides that no one will ever make her feel like that ever again. So it's a, it's actually a pretty surprisingly sympathetic villain origin story for yeah, Karen. That's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you kind you feel some sympathy for her, yeah. even though she is the villain. She's she's almost irredeemable, but every Karen does have an origin story. Yeah, I think you're not born like that. I wouldn't not be interested in a documentary that traced back the origins of your like some of the Karens that yeah. were made famous online. I mean, there's probably some like pretty sad, bad stuff that happened in their lives. Yeah. They didn't get the respect that they deserved at some point, and now it's coming home to roost. We should go down to Netflix tomorrow. They'll buy anything. There's Karen. already uh, the a, origin story. A, a, a horror movie called Karen got yeah. greenlit fairly recently. Well, no, I, w- I came up with the idea, Scarin, and I don't know if it was ripped off or not, but if it is, I'm going to be upset. If not, yeah. we still need to go to Netflix and pitch the Karen series where we find all the ones that went viral. Well, first, what led up to the viral moment, their backstory, why yeah. they're such a bitch, and then the fallout of how their lives were ruined by it. Yeah, sort of like a Winnebago Man. Great documentary, by the way. One of the best documentaries ever. But a Winnebago Man for uh, various Karen incidents. Yeah. This I, is, Karen, I, this is your chance to tell your side of the story. The problem is, you get there with the film crew, she just starts freaking out again. Then you just got another Karen vir- viral video yeah. on your Yeah, or hands. she lies to get things on her side, and mm-hmm. you don't get an honest version of the story. Uh, well, we'll hash it out later. Yeah, <laughs> anyways, yeah. That's another another great idea from Internet Today. Yeah, if, if Netflix is watching, you know, throw us some money. We'll figure out other people to make it. It's yeah. just, we come up with the ideas, not the execution. Yeah. So we find out, yeah, this Karen, uh, her old boss was a complete asshole who treated her like shit. Mm-hmm. And that's how she became Karen. And we, we flash back to the present. And so I, I, t- I have Karen here lash out at the employee with a you're not the boss of me sort of rant. Which, You're uh, not the boss of me now. It doesn't work. Uh, it only makes my Karen or more angry. And then uh, I try another rant about how the mask rule is based on fear. That doesn't work. Finally, I try a rant about how they are trying to take away our freedoms with the mask. That doesn't work. And by now, my Karen's freakout meter is totally full. She starts physically attacking employees and bystanders, shouting, This is privilege. And, uh, yeah, the whole thing gets filmed. She ends up featured on a Reddit freakout forum, and that's game over for me. Yeah, I guess I so. lost. Wow, sounds incredible. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's a pretty realistic outcome given all the real-world examples of various Karens refusing to wear masks at the supermarket and spouting off some conspiratorial pseudoscientific nonsense as justification. Anyways, after loading up a save, head down to the local restaurant where Karen meets up with her friends, three other Karens, and there's a bunch of dialogue between the Karens about various Karen situations that they found themselves in recently. When the waitress comes by to ask how they're doing, our Karen complains that her meal didn't come with the almonds it was supposed to have, which of course was never actually listed on the menu. A male Karen sitting nearby butts in, seemingly flirting with Karen, and compliments her for fighting for what she wants. Mm -hmm. He eventually gives the waitress a bunch of money to go buy some almonds, which Karen is impressed by, but it turns out in the end that male Karen wasn't actually flirting with Karen, he was flirting with the waitress. And that drives Karen nearly to a full freak out. Yeah, it gets real close. But Karen successfully manages to get the waitress to stay past the end of the shift to serve the Karens instead of taking up the male Karen's offer to go join him on his yacht. Yeah. 
And uh, I don't know. There was a few more places. I didn't end up trying out all the locations in the so game. So no spoilers? No full spoilers? Yeah, and I don't want to spoil the entire game. I want yeah. if, if this seems like something you're into, please go support uh, the person and pay the money and and don't don't pull a carrot at the end and get the refund. That sounds like a fun uh, Twitch game. I might play this after this video goes up. I don't want to spoil yeah, it before I mean, the video goes up. But I, uh, I played it on my own, just like screen capping and OBS, but I kind of mm -hmm. wish I'd done it on Twitch and gotten some... Uh, You'll have to chat and decide what yeah. the Karen should do. Yeah, I'll do that yeah, tomorrow. Because like, the answers aren't timed or anything. Yeah, so, perfect. Yeah, definitely worth it. It's like that uh, stream. when we streamed uh, uh, Dream Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy Dating Simulator. Yeah, or Dream Daddy. Yeah. It's it's a very similar... I guess that's the visual novel style. That These are the only visual novels I've played. Well, at least this one, the Karen can get canceled. In Dream Daddy, we never got to fuck one of the other guys. Yeah. They just fall in love. Boo. False advertising. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't get to try the other locations, uh, the spa, <laughs> and uh, the final one is the game studio. Mm -hmm. That's after the supermarket level, and I, I also didn't bother retrying the supermarket level to figure out how you manage to get what you want without wearing a mask. I'm going to assume at the spa, like she goes to like a Korean spa and yells at them in Chinese or something. Yeah, I, <laughs> like there wasn't any racism, so I'm. I, they're, I, they're saving it for the yeah, game studio and the spa. Yeah, I think that might be where it happens. Mm -hmm. But anyway, for two dollars and fifty four cents, I give this game a solid seven out of ten. <laughs> okay, cool. That's our first ever serious game review we've ever done. Yeah, we'll have to get shibby uh, to see if it's <laughs> actually worth it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, technically. To be fair, this isn't the first Karen game, at least on Steam. I checked a few days before Karen and Outrage Simulator dropped on Steam. Another $3 game called Karen Simulator Wage Cuck vs. Karen. Oh my god. Also came up. Uh, came I already up. know where this is, like just yeah. by the title alone. It's basically just a hastily thrown together first person shooter in which you play as a store clerk who just like guns down oh. a bunch of zombie like Karens. Uh, the developer, 2Gen Pro, also just in the past few weeks released. Simp Slayer Simulator 2K20, mm. and back in April released Jesus Strikes Back 2, The Resurrection, which uh, both of those look like basically the same game as the Karen game with minor alterations. Yeah. They're also all clearly influenced by like 4chan culture, mm -hmm. and uh, the Jesus game literally lets you play as Trump, Hitler, Mussolini, and Pepe in addition to Jesus, so... Bit of a yikes there. Probably not going to be checking any of those out. I did buy uh, that one. Uh, there was like... I mean, it was, I think, I believe it was kickstarted by, you know, people that you wouldn't really want to associate with. But mm -hmm. I did play, like, the Trump uh, Contra game. Like, it's 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 like a side-scrolling game, like Contra. Yeah. But you're Trump. And you fight, like, I think you fight uh, Rosie O'Donnell and a bunch yeah, of other, like, celebrities. It's it's pretty funny. Yeah. That's but you defeat ISIS in one of the levels. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. We all want ISIS defeated. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this this these <laughs> games have, like, uh, yeah, a little, a little more of the the darker side of the 4chan influence on there. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a Karen game, I would not recommend this one. I'd recommend Karen and Outrage Simulator. Yeah. Because um, uh, I, I, I quite enjoyed playing it. I think that this would be a decent game for actual Karens to play to get out their aggression. That's true. Yeah. And to know their limits. Yeah. And uh, to hone their craft. Yeah, exactly. You get a little freak out meter and then you know it's like muscle memory. You'll know when you're getting to the point of no return. Yeah. In real life. Mm hmm Yes. It's like flight simulator for Karens. This is basically like cognitive behavioral therapy for Karens. Yes. Well, anyways. Uh, it's so cheap. I, I have my Steam, my, or, uh, my Twitch game for this week, so yeah. looking forward to that. Anyways, let's move on. I know we said a few weeks back that we, uh, we're going to slow down on the Jacob Wall coverage, since it's abundantly clear that at this point, the, most of the dumb bullshit that he and Jack Berkman do is ego-driven, and he actually seems to get off on people talking about him no matter how negatively they're talking about him. Yeah. It's all just feeding his his ego, and he loves it. Yeah. Uh, so we apologize in advance for talking about these guys again, but their latest antics are pretty terrible even for them. And also, we have to say that every time too. illegal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know what? Just as a pal palate cleanser before we talk about it, uh, here's Jacob Wall getting punched in the face a few days ago in D.C. at a protest. So, ah. <sighs> And we, of course, do not condone this type of violence, and uh, we feel that it is ultimately counterproductive, just like when Richard Spencer got punched in the face a few years ago. Uh, but it is difficult to not feel some degree of satisfaction about it, especially because he worked so hard on all those muscles just to not use them in the time he does, he, yeah. It, they, the one time he could have used them. The part where he gets punched in the face, like, obviously I can't support, but the fact that he, like, he runs away like yeah. such a wuss yes. afterwards, that's funny. Now... Did the punch work on Richard Spencer? He has claimed that he is moving 
to be, he's becoming a leftist now, right? Don't. He's, but it, it, he's it's not. the heel turn of the grifter. Yeah, uh, exactly. all of the, the diamond and silk going after Fox News, the Richard Spencer flipping to the left. It's a heel turn to try to like uh, yeah. get back in, into like making money some other way because they've yeah. or just getting attention. Like Richard, yes. Richard Spencer is one of those guys that like just he's been deplatformed enough, and everyone's just like doesn't want to be associated with him. So then he comes out and he's like, actually, I'm voting for Biden. I'm I'm voting a straight Democratic ticket in the next election. People are like, huh, that's interesting. But it's like he's just saying it for attention. The man's yes. a literal fucking Nazi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, anyway, to be clear, we'd much rather Jacob Wall be in prison where he belongs than yeah. getting punched on the face on, on the streets. Uh, yeah, rather than violence inflicted upon his uh, you know, great body. Well uh, done. Uh, <laughs> I know he watches the show, so I'm just going to ask, Jacob, if you worked so hard to become so fucking ripped, why did you just run away? Well, it's a lot of, a lot of guys, they... They're, they're more about the vanity muscles than what you can do with them. Because, like... Well, obviously, it doesn't... If it was an intimidation thing, it's not working. No. No, it's not. Like, because you did kind of run away like a, like a little wuss, so. Yeah. I mean, That's what's the thing. Like, he's trying to get, like, huge, like, bodybuilder style. But all the, like, you look at MMA guys, they're not huge. They're, uh. Yeah, some of them are well-defined. but compact. they're compact. Yeah, yeah. But they're, like, solid as rock. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't get the girls as much as just walking around flexing your nips. Yeah. Which Jacob wants to do, obviously. Yes. Anyways, with that punch to Jacob Wall's face out of the way, the latest Jacob Wall news is that he and Jack Berkman may be behind a bunch of recent robocalls in Michigan and Pennsylvania to battleground states. And these robocalls feature false claims that mail-in voting registration will be used by the police to track fugitives, used by credit card companies to find debtors, and by the CDC to track people for mandatory vaccines. None of which are true. No. Uh, the call urges people to not be tricked into handing over their private information to the man and to stay safe and beware of vote by mail. Mm. It's basically your typical political robocall meant to misinform and suppress voters. This happens in every election and it's gross uh, every time. But uh, this robocall also starts by saying that it's from Project 1699 quote, a civil rights organization founded by Jack Berkman and Jacob Wool. Well, so here's the thing about that, too, is it's like, we all know about their shenanigans. Yeah. But again, like 99% of America doesn't exist in the online space that we... Must be nice. Yes, that, that, <laughs> that we exist in. Which I envy those. People. I do as well. Uh, but yeah, so when people hear like, uh, oh, whoa, wow, sounds official. Those are two names. Those are <laughs> names that sound like real names. Yeah. Jacob Wall, where have I heard that before? I guess nowhere. <laughs> Anyways, so on one hand, this is exactly the type of thing that you'd expect from Wall and Berkman. Their entire brand is politically motivated disinformation. On the other hand, though, they claim they're not responsible for these robocalls, and they claim the calls came from someone trying to embarrass them. And, I mean, they've kind of got a point. Why would they reveal their names right at the beginning of the call? Also, the phone number the robocalls came from was a phone number Jack Berkman has previously used publicly, of course, uh, phone numbers can be spoofed pretty easily, and as Jack Berkman told the Daily Beast in an email, no one in their right mind would put their own cell on a robocall. And yeah, yeah I mean, he's got a point, but then on, on the other hand, we always talk about the, like, but why would I do that kind of grift? Yeah, that's the thing. Why would I do something so blatant? So, yeah, like, knowing what we know about Jack Berkman and Jacob Wall, they have a long history of just doomed-to-fail uh -huh. schemes with no chance of success that fall apart immediately and immediately get traced back to them. Like Jacob Wall's and, mom's phone number. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like mistakes that it's almost like they want to be caught. And yeah, I mean, they, like we said, they seem to just enjoy being talked about regardless of whether it's positive or negative. So yeah, with Berkman and Wool's profiles and relevancy at their lowest point ever, arguably, mm -hmm. is it really that outlandish to think they would send out disinformation robocalls that immediately identify Jacob Wool and Jack Berkman as the people behind them? I mean, for anyone else, we would agree that it makes no goddamn sense, especially since Michigan's Secretary of State and Attorney General are apparently investigating the calls, and it could result in, like, serious criminal charges. Yeah. But Jacob Wool and Jack Berkman not only constantly step on rakes, uh, a lot of times those rakes are rakes that they personally place on the ground right in front of them, fully intending to step on. If I stepped uh, on I this know. rake, why, I'd be a real idiot. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, like, their whole... M.O. at this point is See, just but, like, Your Honor, I'd have to be a fucking idiot to do any of the things I'm accused of. Yeah, you're like, right. Man, but you're you free did to go. do them. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's, it, but it's even stranger still that there would be anyone else that exists in this entire world 
that would try to clown on these guys when they just do it themselves for free. Yeah. Who would pay for this and who would take the legal risk to do this other than the men themselves? Yeah. That's the thing. Like, uh, no one likes these guys, but I don't think anyone cares about them enough to, like, frame them for... <laughs> it's a serious uh, using, interference. Crime. Using the rake-stepping analogy, it's like Jacob Wall and Jack Berkman get out of their car and are surrounded by rakes and some random person goes, have another one. Yeah. I bet he'll step on my rake. When yeah. in the meantime, they're going to be they, fucking smacking themselves in the face. They've got enough anyway, rakes. Yeah. 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 yeah these, these are not people you need to frame. No. Not at all. <laughs> they they have plenty of capers of their own. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So that's uh, that'll be interesting to see. Like, Because there's an official like state of Michigan mm -hmm. investigation. I don't know if Pennsylvania is doing one. I don't know how easy it is to even like trace robocalls because you can spoof phone numbers so easily but like I don't know this could result in charges which like you know knowing how these guys manage to wiggle out of everything and take that's what 10 I'm saying. fucking years for it to but what I'm saying is like they're already facing so many other charges there's so much shit going on right now that they're probably like man it wouldn't be great if we had another fucking criminal case against us like that would really yeah. bump us up Maybe and, and we can say the government was coming like a Roger Stone like the, obviously the government's coming after me mm -hmm. Trying to set up some sort of like judicial gridlock system where like they're in trouble in so many court jurisdictions that yeah. one court's like, you can't prosecute them over there. We need them over here in our courtroom. Where did this happen again? Michigan? Uh, the calls were in Michigan and uh, Pennsylvania. So it's like what the only thing I can imagine is that they did some like they tried to play some 5D chess where they actually set up the robocalls with their names on it, but using the name of like a Michigan or Pennsylvania politician to set up the account. Really? And then they were the ones that set up the account that set it up for a politician in Michigan to set them up so they could inadvertently blame them for trying to get them in trouble. I mean, that's what they kind of did with the Mueller thing. Yeah. There's like so many layers where it's like it reached a point where it didn't make sense in any form of explanation. For yeah. Them. Well, at that point, the legal uh, teams behind trying to prosecute this are just going to get frustrated and get Give up. Yeah. This isn't even <laughs> fucking worth it. stupid. It's <laughs> giving me a headache. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll keep you updated on that. And I I, guess... I'm going with that theory. That yeah. they, there's some kind of, it's like some kind of fucking shell game that they've try, done themselves. Trying to frame someone for framing them? Yes. Yeah. They've got shell companies that represent shell companies that invest in shell companies somewhere. Yeah. And they did that with this fucking robocall thing. Could be. And Could right be now, true. yeah, Jacob Wall, he's... Like, how do they know? And he's just punching himself in the dick. Damn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every time they, 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 they so figure horny. it out. I need to write some fan fiction again. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, before we get to the headlines part of the show, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. And I got this new shirt from Stitch Fix. I, I asked them on the forum. I was like, summertime, send me some Hawaiian shirts. They sent me three. I'm keeping yeah. two of them. I sent one of them back. Got a couple fishing boats on there. Yeah. It's yeah. nautical. Yes, it is nautical. I may have only been to the beach once this summer, mm -hmm. but I'm feeling very nautical. Yes. Anyways, wouldn't it be great if every clothing store you shopped at had only your size, what styles you like, and at the price you want? Well, Stitch Fix is a company focused on making that happen. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling company that makes getting the clothes you love effortless. It's a completely different way to shop that's all about you every time. To get started, go to stitchfix.com weird to set up your profile, and they'll deliver great looks personalized just for you in your colors, styles, and budget. You pay a $20 styling fee for each fix, which is credited towards anything that you keep. You schedule at any time. There's no subscription required. Plus, shipping, returns, and exchanges, they are easy and free. Stitch Fix does all the hard work for you, making great style effortless for everybody, including men, women, and kids. So get started today at stitchfix.com slash weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash weird. And this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. If you're bored in the house, why not play with your balls? I do it all the time. Our sponsor today, Manscaped, is here to make sure your balls are smooth while you or your partner are playing with them. <laughs> smooth as eggs. Manscaped promotes <laughs> clean hygiene when it comes to shaving your balls thanks to their lawnmower 3.0. Mm -hmm. Manscaped is our go-to brand for below the waist grooming and hygiene. And while you're probably looking for new things to do at home, why not make grooming your balls a part of your routine? <laughs> you gotta waste some time at some yeah. point. Groom There's those nothing balls. going on. Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0. The Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, waterproof cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. And not only does Manscaped obsess over technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience, uh, they also use 
use the best ingredients in their formulations. Inside the Perfect Package, you'll also find the Manscaped Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You'll are probably sitting on the couch with your hand on your balls right now anyway, uh -huh. so you might as well keep them smooth as eggs and smelling fresh. Subscribe to the Perfect Package and get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower 3.0 delivered to your door every three months, making sure your trimmer always stays fresh and clean. For a limited time, subscribers get not one but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, which is a $39 value. It's a nice bag. It's a nice bag. Yeah. And the patented high-performance anti-chafing manscaped boxers. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WEIRDNEWS at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code WEIRDNEWS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using code WEIRDNEWS. Make playing with your balls the best part of your day. <laughs> it already is, but this will be even better. Thanks, Manscaped. Uh, I also, like, I got to point out with that perfect package, you get the Crop Reviver Spray. Yeah. Everybody knows about my world-famous walks. I go on very long walks. Yeah, you're going to want miles. it afterwards. Come home afterwards. Yeah. Oh my God! It's like I'm a new man. Revitalized. It's I it re literally revives me. It mm -hmm. smells great, and I uh, I don't feel terrible. Yeah. Usually I'll take a shower. Sometimes you just get a quick spray and you yeah. go about your day and then take the shower later. Sometimes all I got time for is a mm -hmm. quick spray. Uh, anyways, let's get to this week's weirdest headlines from around the world. Starting with Pang's eye, speed drinking internet star says goodbye to fans in tearful live video. So I still haven't gotten to the bottom of this, but mm -hmm. Mr. Pong's eye who we've talked the about. The king. The king. The internet king. The, yes. the nicest man in China. We've talked about him a bunch before. But uh, yeah, last week he he did like two live videos where he was like visibly sad, crying a little bit. He was using text-to-speech to say like goodbye. Mm -hmm. Sounded like he was in trouble with like the Chinese government. Like it sounded pretty serious. Uh, but and, from the uh, beginning of this, I was like, look, I mean, we donated to him on live stream he probably got to the point where he could actually get a check from uh, an American company for yeah, I don't some know how that's monetization. Working. Yeah. So uh, what like, I can only assume is that he got a check from an American company for a not insubstantial amount of money, and they were probably like, wait, hold on, now this guy's on our radar. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird because, like, the Chinese government obviously knew what he was doing. Like, they, And there was even, uh, like, I found a tweet from... He did like a charity live stream a few months back for like COVID nineteen relief, and like one of the like China's state run media outlets like reported on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, they obviously know what the fuck he's doing. Even though like you're technically not allowed to use uh, Twitter and YouTube in China, you have to use a VPN for it. Like they knew what he was doing, and I think it sounds like it's pretty common there to like circumvent those rules. But like, I don't know. It's it's just dumb for them to crack down on him because he's like the best. PR yeah, that they have. Yeah, I know. Like, in a year with, like, the virus and this whole, like, TikTok thing. He's like, keeping me normal. He's just this dude that makes look... He, he, ma he makes living in, like, just the fucking countryside of rural China look awesome. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I... He, he cooks good food. He's got he a great life. <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, I, I was... Listen, it's been pretty depressing this year. Yeah. And anytime I was able to catch one of his live streams, I had a smile on my face. Yeah, no, he it cheered me up. Radiates positivity. Yeah, teach you how to cook stuff. He's like, he's like cooking stuff that he grew himself on his farm. <laughs> when like, China came for our jobs, I said nothing. Yeah. <laughs> when China came for our internet apps, I said nothing. If China lays a fucking finger on Pang's eye, yeah, I'm coming for you, China. I, yeah, I'm gonna like, I I'm going to become a war hawk. Yeah. Against China, if if they hurt him, but so like t about twelve hours after he did his live stream, where he's like distressed, yeah, says goodbye forever. He posts on his Twitter account, like, "Sorry guys, not going anywhere. I was just a little drunk last night." And it comes with a, a drinking video of his that I believe is like never been seen before. <laughs> but that was like five days ago. Yeah, and there hasn't been any update. There hasn't been any like proof of life. Yeah, so I'm still kind of worried that something happened to him. Yeah. And they did this to, like, throw you off their trail. Yes. I hope not. But, like... We're hoping the best. Yeah, I, uh... I'm going to wait for more posts before I start really freaking out, but I am a little bit worried. Yes. So, uh, yeah. And I, I do want to reiterate that uh, we didn't never say nothing. We've done multiple videos critical of China over the course of many yes. years. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, yeah. That should go without saying. Yes. Yes, but this is the final straw. This is the final straw. I swear Don't to God, make Mr. me come over there, Mister Xi. This is it. If you if you fuck with Peng's eye, we're gonna give we're gonna send you Jacob Wall. Yeah, <laughs> it's only fair. Yeah, 
If you think that Pang Zai is a bad representation of, of, of your country online, you got another thing coming. Because we will send you Jacob Wall, a true bad example of a yeah. person that takes the internet for granted. They would probably just execute Jacob Wall. <laughs> like he, yes. Like they, they, say what you will about the Chinese justice system. They get things done a lot quicker, mm-hmm. and you're pretty much guilty as soon as you're arrested. And, We're going to uh, send them Jacob Wall and Jacob Paul, and they're going to have a lot to deal with. Here's some Jakes for you. Yeah. You know those, uh, you know those uh, like, things where you can put a face on the talking, and it makes it talk and sing and stuff like that? Someone did one of Xi Jinping literally singing the Winnie the Pooh song this week, and it was another point of joy. Yeah. Just, I, it, was, it was fantastic. But we, actually, let's not talk about that right now because we want to make sure that Peng's eyes safe. Yeah. He doesn't look like Winnie the Pooh, the, the no, Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping is handsome and yeah. slim. And, yeah, and he, you know, treats everyone really nice. No, no, he doesn't. But <laughs> Peng Zai, stay safe. Yeah, please. Anyways, in other headlines, woman declared dead by paramedics found to be alive at Detroit funeral home. They were about to embalm her. Horrifying. Yeah, a lot of people, apparently some, uh, the, the, uh, the more, t- someone lost their job over this because they're, they're clearly there was a, uh, Discrepancy. <laughs> Something happened here. Cause, An oopsie. Yeah. And, and like, I, th- I don't know. There's still a lot of questions, too. It's like, because it was like within like a very short period of time, this woman was found dead, examined by medical examiners, and then sent to the funeral home. They're like, all right, let's 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 just get this done ASAP. Yeah, I don't and know what the deal is. Don't leave this body sitting around for too long. I mean, maybe they're just, you know, things are going uh, a, a little more uh Casually, because of the COVID, they're just like, okay, well, they, yeah, pulse, uh, not okay. Yep. All right, dad's dead. Get That's a dead here. body. I've seen a lot. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I, her family's suing the shit out of everyone involved. And, yeah, uh, I, I would say based off these basic facts, <laughs> they probably stand uh, to uh, get some compensation. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that's crazy. They were literally about to drain her blood and replace it with formaldehyde. Well, you'd imagine she'd wake up at that point. Yeah, well, she, I mean, I think she's still, like, comatose or something, but they're like, wait, like a pulse she, or something? Yeah, she has a pulse and she's breathing. They're like, uh. Yikes. Like, she was in a body bag for, like, two hours. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hopefully Wild. she wakes up and gets all that money, a new lease on life. Yeah, that'd be cool. Hell, yeah. You know what? I will go skydiving. <laughs> I've already died once. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Kill me once. The world's most expensive sheep has just been purchased for $490,000. I don't know why. But based on the picture of it, the sheep has massive testicles. Oh. Just a... It's probably a, a stud. Stud sheep. It, like, I've never seen a sheep the that looks wolf. this, like, jacked. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like a pit bull sheep. It's got a giant nut sack. Yeah. I'm sure they're buying it for its virile uh, semen. Yes. Because that's, like... And a good, that's why you buy these animals. Pelt. But that's, like... Almost half a million dollars for this sheep. Is but that... that's the thing. If, if it is if those balls are so big, they have dozens of other sheep ready to go. Yeah. Inside those balls. There was actually there was a bidding war over yeah. the sheep, and eventually the auction house. They're like, look, what if the what if all three of you farmers agree to split the sheep? You'll share it. You put it on a sheep it's schedule. A polyamorous relationship. With uh, yeah. The sheep. So that's what they that's what they agreed on. Mm-hmm. They they that agreed. man's name Jerry Falwell Jr. <laughs> yeah. Listen, there's no reason all three of us can't enjoy the sheep. Get in there and fuck my sheep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I saw the funniest, the funniest picture of the Jerry and Becky Falwell. It was like, it was like when the uh, middle-aged couple at the vacation resort who's been buying you drinks all night, uh, you know, <laughs> Finally starts comes giving you that look. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I, I'm so interested to see how their lives play out from here because... It's far from over with those two. Well, the thing, it, like, this happens all the fucking time with mm-hmm. evangelicals. It hasn't happened for a while, but in the but 80s or 90s, like, yeah. it, was, it was all the time. And they always would just come back, like, a year later and be like, Lord, forgive me. And they're like, well, that's all you got to do. Clearly, all they, right. yeah, they, you know, the Lord is very forgiving. Yep. But they're like, uh, you know, I feel like in the 80s and 90s, uh, there was more prominent religious people, and maybe I've just been out of the game, but then you had, like, Mother Teresa, you had, uh, uh, what's his name, the televangelist crazy guy that would... uh, Be more specific. (laughs) Okay, anyways, uh, now you just have the Falwells, really, and then that other crazy televangelist guy. No, you've you've definitely got got With Kanye. What's his Uh, name? Austin. Yeah, Joel Austin. You got Joel Austin, you got that guy with the jet who uh, gets real upset. You got Jim Backer, who sells sells the food buckets. Yeah. Um, you got that uh, that guy in Louisiana who like 
went to jail as a martyr because he wouldn't enforce mask rules. Like, there's a lot of them at okay, varying, yeah, varying right. levels of success. Uh, that Rodney uh, guy from Florida yeah. who uh, had his church shut down. Well, but those two only made national news because of the COVID thing. Like, the Falwells are, like, a nationally known... Yeah. Yeah. But also, Jerry isn't a televangelist. No, like, he's his, just a... His dad was. Jerry's just, like, inherited his father's businesses. Yeah. And he, like... Yeah, I don't think he's like a preacher, and he yeah. and good because not a charismatic person. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm yeah. sure he will claim that uh, he's super sorry. And uh, it was the know. devil got into me. Yeah, the devil got into me. But mm-hmm. it's cool. Jesus he's, forgave me. So. Devil's gone now. Devil's gone. We're good, right? Yeah. South oh. Carolina official faces criticism for dressing in traditional Arab clothing to play a terrorist in a training exercise. Well, he wanted to make it real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he like signed. It was like some local security firm or whatever. They did a an exercise, training exercise, and they're like, "All right, just for realism's sake, uh, <laughs> like this is just the most stereotypical costumes. Like, no one who commits like terrorism acts, even if they're Muslims, like dresses Dress like a fucking garb. sheik yeah. from yeah, yeah, like yeah. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, like, but that's what they all dress like here. I'm like, he's like, it's, we're just being realistic. I'm like, no, no that's not a, not realistic. Yeah, no, not at all. Like. There's plenty of pictures like online of like terrorists. Yeah, every major terror attack, yeah. they go out of their way to look as like normal, normal and <laughs> secular as possible. <laughs> Here I am to do a terrorist attack. Look, like, everyone yeah. would know. Yeah, uh, like the brothers in Boston, like literally yeah. just like hoodies and like a backpack. Yeah, every, all the 9/11 hijackers just looked like fucking businessmen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is dumb. Yes, very dumb and racist. Cocaine trends on Twitter during Republican National Convention. And this is, uh, I'm assuming it's because of Don Jr. and uh, well, yeah, Kimberly Guilfoyle's Don, Gilfoyle's Don speech. Jr. and his girlfriend. Kimberly Guilfoyle was very enthusiastic. Yeah. Uh, especially given there was no crowd there to play off of. She was really belting it out. Come! Come! The best is yet to come! come. And I love because it, she was waiting for that, like, triumphant yeah. noise beat. No. But she had to, like, stretch her it out. Her voice is just echoing in this empty room. So there's yeah. her. And then Don Jr. just looked like shit. He was covered in sweat. His eyes were all glassy. Like, yeah. But, uh... Well, I guarantee you it's because, I mean, it's... However you want to say... If you want to say fake news, whatever. You're a lost cause. But it's been a pretty well-known fact that Donald Trump, like, rails Adderall. And I'm sure yeah. that it's, like, a thing, like a... Like a uh, uh, a tip that he gave to his son, like, hey, by the way, the doctor can give you these, like, magic pills mm-hmm. that, you know, give you boundless energy and make you the smartest person in the room. Yeah. You should try them out. I think it could have been that, but, like, another... Yeah, but he boofed him. Another, <laughs> <laughs> another pretty plausible theory I saw is just that, like, Don Jr. is just lives in his father's shadow, mm-hmm. is not nearly as charismatic or likable as his dad, mm-hmm. and uh, is not a good public speaker. And uh, just has this immense pressure to live up to his father, but cannot and probably was like actually pretty stressed out about giving a speech, especially to an empty room, which is is pretty awkward. Yes. So uh, could be cocaine. Could Could be be anything. Could be Maybelline. Who knows? Well, at least he's a better speaker than uh, Tiffany Trump, who has way too many teeth in her mouth. Yeah. Well, she, she, Tiffany (laughs) Trump. I I do still feel slightly bad for her, but also it's the same with Don Jr. It's like both of them just live in constant fear that their dad fucking hates them. Well, he does. Disappointing them because, yes, he does. He's a, he doesn't care about he's them. He's a fucking narcissist, and yeah. narcissists are incapable of really, truly loving their children. And especially, like, she came from, like, a, uh, outside of marriage. Like, her yeah, mom he, was, he, like, the other woman. He's from just, like, the buffer wife. Yeah. Like, between the two major wives. Yeah, and like she grew up on the West Coast while the rest of them grew up on the but East Coast. But she's still a bad person. Like, let's be clear. Yeah, no. Yeah, fuck yeah, her speech, like, too, is just like, I know how a lot of you are feeling. I, too, just graduated from law school. So the struggle of finding work is not lost on me. It's just like, are you out of your fucking mind? Are you that detached from reality? Yeah, you have probably tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in your personal bank account. Like, imagine, um, like, not even a normal college student who's riddled with debt, yeah. but like, a law student who actually had to pay for their own education and then has to go find work, mm-hmm. like, she, I don't like her and she has too many teeth. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And also, pro- fucking the president it, probably feels the same way. Ivanka uh, got a mean look from Melania the next night in her green screen shirt. Yeah. 
to did that like well that so that that book is supposed to come out this week so the audio clips yeah might the come one with it. like Melania's former best friend talking about how like she fucking hates Ivanka well because she got dicked over by the Trump administration as well just like everyone else so now she's coming clean with all this shit yeah anyways it's just it's probably just a bunch of uh, no one cares yeah, about anything it's, anyone it's says about this family anyway, yeah. they're, they're, but I would love to hear the takes yeah I'm curious Lordy I hope there's takes but it's not. Everyone's like, oh, let's let's see the Trumps wiggle their way out of this. And they're like, just wiggles out of it easily. Yeah. When you don't care about getting in trouble, you can't get in trouble, really. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Hurricane Laura topples Confederate statue two weeks after officials voted to keep it. God is the hur- Antifa. The hurricane is Antifa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Do what do you mean God's anti-fascist? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, fucking hilarious. Just great. Fantastic. Yeah. Love to see it. Also... I feel like there's a lot less reporting on this hurricane, which was catastrophic to the area because uh, of yeah. all the other shit that's happening. Yeah, well, I mean, like, yeah, there's just too much going on because there was that there was that storm in, like, Iowa or what it was. Yeah, like, they, like, shut the power off for, like, weeks or something. Yeah, there was, like, this horrible natural disaster happening in the, in the plains uh, or, like, Midwest or wherever the fuck. And, like, I didn't even hear about it. Like, people literally on Twitter tweeted directly at me, like, hey, are you guys going to cover this? I was like... Never Whoa, hold on. What the fuck? Like, they yeah. turned off power for days in this area and it's, like, blowing over houses? My parents had no idea that fires were happening in California. Yeah, just everything bad is happening There's too all much. at once. There's too much happening. Yeah. it's uh, uh, We are living in the end times. Uh, next headline. Tom Cruise performs death-defying stunt, watching Tenet in a packed cinema. This was weird. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not super weird that he went to go see Tenet. It's weird that he... He tweets like twice a year Mm -hmm. and they're always like basically promotional tweets. Yeah. And this was like a fully produced short video. Tom Cruise going to the movies and like talking about how much he likes going to the movies. Well, I think he just he loves movies and he loves being in movies. And it feels like like a PR firm or like or like the studio behind Tenet was like, you know, it would be a great idea. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Like. I don't know. It's fucking weird because I'm, I'm sure he's pissed too that Maverick didn't come out this summer. Yeah, but, but it's just like he doesn't post. He's 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 a pretty offline guy, and he comes back to just be like, going to see Tenet in theaters. See, pretty safe. Everyone here's had a great time. Well, God, I miss the theater. Much in the same way that all of the celebrities at the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak did that Imagine video, because I feel like they somehow wanted to connect with people on a personal level, but absolutely cannot because of their <laughs> lavish lifestyles and, yeah. and everything that they, they, they're they they're so above and beyond, even if they really do care. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of them really do care about people. Like they, mm-hmm. they want to connect, but they, yeah. it's just impossible. They're just so out of touch. Whereas Tom Cruise, like actually probably really wanted to be the guy that proved that it was okay to see the movies because he, I'm sure that Tom Cruise fucking loves movies yeah. and he loves being in them and he wants to tell, like, but that's the thing is like the same thing as celebrities before in the coronavirus thing is yeah. him now like, I have to be the one yeah. to take the burden for other people to show them it's okay. He does have a bit of like a God complex. Yeah. Just based off the fact that he constantly puts his own life in danger. Yeah. For like stunts that could very easily be the same pulled off by an actual stuntman. Tom Cruise going to an actual movie theater to prove it's okay is the same thing that when Elon Musk hears there's a tragedy somewhere, he like, has to be the one to solve clearly it. Clearly I must, I am the solution. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So there's something there. It's just, yeah. it's like, uh, well, a lot of people just go, they don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. In fact, people would be probably happier if they didn't yeah but they're like something in there is going you are the one that has to do this tom now's your time gal gadot you have to tell people it's going to be okay even though only a week has passed yeah <laughs> it was so early <laughs> these slubs didn't last a week yeah anyway speaking of tenant ceiling collapse injures too during tenant screening in singapore Jesus so Christ. uh it, it, it's not as safe as tom cruise might want you to believe these theaters they've been in disuse for so long mm-hmm that you leave a theater empty for months, you bring the people back in, it's shaking everything. Yeah. The dust is settling. Don't clap. Yeah. The roof might cave in. The ceiling's going to fall on people. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a, a fucking like AC unit, a bunch of scaffolding, like fell on some people's heads. I think they're alive, but pretty, uh, pretty bad theater experience for them. Turns out, coronavirus aside, you're a lot safer just staying indoors all the time at your own I place. agree. I agree. Yeah. When I go on walks, I'm like... I could get hit by a car. Anything right could now. happen. Anything. I almost got hit by a car like two months ago, like to the point where I had an adrenaline rush. Like yeah. he was just not looking at all, and I had to, I had to jump out of the way, and then he gunned it because he was embarrassed. I'm assuming. Like, yeah. Oh my god, like, I almost hit someone, and like I walked home and I was just like, 
hey, I almost fucking died to my wife. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And I was like, no, I really did almost. Yeah, probably definitely hospital, if not worse. And yeah, uh, I don't think I'll go outside for a while. I mean, I've had like face to face encounters with coyotes like multiple times in the last few months because they, especially at the beginning, yeah. they're like, it's the city's ours now. It's gotten real quiet around. That's here. why you got to wait till it gets a little bit colder outside. And, you, and then you get you can start wearing steel toed boots yeah. with pants tucked in. And then the, you're going to be the one looking at the coyotes saying, yeah. you want to fucking go? They are pretty easy to scare. You just go like, ah! And they're like, okay, we don't want to, okay, look, we mostly eat trash. Yeah. We're puppies if we find them, <laughs> but mostly trash. Oh, anyways, California wildfires are making wine grapes taste like barbecue. Yeah, and apparently this is a problem. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is, a, like, I, I did do a, I did a tasting in wine country a few years back where they had, like, different years of the same varieties, mm. and they, like, explained the differences in the taste. It was pretty fascinating. They're like, I, I don't remember much about it at all, but it, it all had to do with, like, the amount of rainfall and the amount of sunshine and yeah. how it affects the taste. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the fire is... We had a really cold spring, so this is going to be a lot more... I don't even know what the fuck... Yeah. It's going to be fruitier. I, the wildfire taste, apparently it's okay with, like, very specific varietals, but, with the, re- <laughs> but with the rest of it, it makes them taste terrible. So Make sure is, you pair this one with ribs. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's sounds like a pretty a pretty bad year for uh oh the, the vintage the, 2020 is going to be just mm, delightful in a couple of years yeah i mean probably not probably yeah. the opposite so this one this year ruined everything yeah among, yeah among all other things yeah. like yeah the, the whole california wine industry gonna <laughs> take a big old shit as well yeah great Speaking of coronavirus, Smash Mouth's ill-fated Sturgis rally show linked to 100-plus cases of coronavirus. So this is like, I mean, it's kind of misleading the article a bit. It's well, like it's like they did the contact tracing and like at least 100 of the people who yeah. later tested positive were at the, the Smash Mouth show. Yes. So it's not that they necessarily caught it there, but there were people with coronavirus there probably. Yes. But, uh, but the Smash Mouth said not to worry and fuck the coronavirus. Yeah. Fuck COVID. Woo. Woo. I thought that would be the cure. Mm-hmm. We've tried everything else, and I thought that might be it. Yeah. The cure's out there somewhere, and we got to figure out what it is. It uh, could be anything. could be Smash Mouth saying it, saying fuck COVID. could be. But it wasn't. Delaware man charged with fifth DUI after riding lawnmower while intoxicated. I didn't say if the other four DUIs were lawnmower DUIs, but I'd have to imagine after four DUIs... It's Why pretty, is this guy still hard to get like insured and stuff? Well, you don't have to get insured to ride your lawnmower. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's and why he's apparently he was just driving over everyone's lawns. He's just like, you know what? I'm going to be a good guy today and cut everyone's grass. Blah. Oh, it's a crime to cut other people's grass and be a good Samaritan. So you're trespassing. <laughs> Look at that grass. It looks a lot better than that, doesn't it? Beautiful. Hey, Beautiful. you gas me up so I can get home. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, the only thing I had left, my lawnmower. They took it away from me. What is he going to get? He's going to be riding around in one of those, like, little tykes plastic <laughs> cars now. Just get me to a hill. I'm going to bomb this sucker down mm. the hill. Mm. Uh. Japanese grandmothers create monkey busters group, fight primates with air guns. They got, I didn't know a bad mon- idea. I didn't know Japan had monkeys. Apparently it does. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. And these old ladies, they have airsoft guns. They're posing like Charlie's Angels. The pictures are hilarious of these Japanese grandmas. I just grandmas. don't see. I, I, listen. I just imagine the mo- this just pisses the monkeys off a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about monkeys, especially Japanese ones. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it sounds like they're just, like, when the monkeys are in their gardens, they're going out and, like, shooting them with airsoft BBs. I mean, like, get out of here. Yeah. Well, they're braver than I am. They are braver than the troops. Yeah, that's true. The troops are doing nothing about the monkeys in yeah. the gardens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. And final headline, powerful wind lifts kite entangled child estimated 30 feet into air in viral video. Uh, I definitely thought this was fake yeah, at I thought, first. I thought, I was like, oh, it's that, it's that Zach Final Cut King on Instagram doing one, another one of his fake ass videos. But nope. It's real. There's multiple angles of it. Yeah. I don't understand the physics of how that child got launched into the air. So like apparently, that. like, the someone was holding the tail. And when the, they launched the kite, he let go of the tail and it like swung around and wrapped around the kid's neck. Now, <laughs> we should say that according to reports, this is secondhand information here we're talking about. Yeah, like the kid got pretty banged up, but they're but apparently alive fine. and fine. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's like <laughs> around the kid's neck. Just, just getting tossed like a fucking rag doll. It doesn't make made of sense. rubber, but that looks pretty violent still. It's, like a, it's uh, the kid probably, I don't know, like 30, 40 pounds. What do little kids weigh? But like, that seems like more... That seems like more than what you would expect. Well, it was a very elaborate kite. 
It was. Yeah. But yeah, this was fucking wild. I was, like, I've never seen anything recently that just made me go, fake. <laughs> and and it was real. Yeah. Yeah. I love my favorite comment was, that kid's going places. Yeah. I love the internet. It's yeah. great. Anyways, that's it for this week's Weekly Weird News. Uh, if you haven't already, please check out two most recent videos over here. Yeah, news Dump, Tech News Day. Check those out. Yeah. And uh, do we have anything? I don't think we have anything to tell you to do. No. Nope. I think we're all good for now. Just be excellent. Yeah. <laughs> be excellent. Uh, we'll see you soon for another new episode. Bye.